This presentation examines confidence intervals and what confidence intervals represent. Let's first examine parameters and recall that a parameter is a number that reflects a characteristic of a population and a population is the entire group that we want to study. For example, the population could be all American citizens, but measuring some number for all American citizens would be very difficult to do. So we say it is usually impossible or impractical to collect data for an entire population. So we generally speaking do not compute parameters, but we make inferences about those parameters by examining statistics. So rather than looking at all US citizens, we look at a small collection of U.S. citizens, and then from that small collection we make inferences or educated guesses about the behavior of all American citizens. So recall what a statistic is. A statistic is a number that represents a characteristic of a sample, and a sample indeed is some subcollection of the entire population. And in most cases, the statistic is determined from a simple random sample. That is a sample in which each element of the population has an equally likely chance to be selected. If you have a simple random sample, it's properly randomized, it can be reasonable for us to make inferences about the entire population based on our representative sample. So let's take a look at some parameters and some statistics. If we're looking at the mean, the parameter symbol that we use is mu, and the symbol for statistic is x bar. For the variance, we like the symbol sigma squared, and for the statistic, s squared. And if we go to standard deviation, of course we know the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance, so we use the symbol sigma for the parameter and s for the statistic. So you'll notice in these first cases, we use a Greek letter for a parameter and a standard letter for the statistic, but that's going to change with our proportion. We use the letter p to represent the parameter, and we use the symbol p hat, p with a little caret on top, to represent a statistic. So we can talk about point estimates. If you want to guess what mu is, your best guess is x bar. That should be relatively close to mu. Similarly, if you want to guess what sigma squared is, your best guess is s squared. And for p, your best guess is p hat. But none of those guesses will be right, because we wouldn't, generally speaking, expect the parameter and the statistic to be identical. So indeed, point estimates are wrong. Now, we have looked at cases with 10 million simulated data points, and then we've used the statistics to give us relatively decent approximations for the parameters. But it's not practical to measure 10 million people just to get a reasonable approximation when we can do it with far fewer. So instead of using point estimates, we tend to use interval estimates, a range of values. And the interval estimate is correct if that range of values does what it's supposed to do, namely capture that parameter. So our goal is to figure out something about the population mean mu. We're going to construct an interval, and that interval will be correct if that interval captures that mu. So here's an example. We ask ourselves, what is the average height of all 18-year-old women in the United States? And it really is impractical to measure all of them. So it's probably fair to say that we can never really know the exact value of mu. It's unknowable. But instead, we're going to measure a random sample of women and then use that information to make an inference or an educated guess about the behavior of mu, the population mean. So let's say, for example, you are told from a statistician that the 95% confidence interval for the mean height of 18-year-old US women is 63.25 to 65.75. What that means is he doesn't know what the exact value from mu is, but he is pretty sure that that value of mu is captured by that interval. The 95% gets at the likelihood that indeed that interval will capture mu. So we don't know what mu is, but the probability is 95% that that interval, 63.25 to 65.75, would indeed capture that true population mean for the entire group of 18-year-old U.S. women. So let's take a look at a Minitab simulation. We want to construct 95% confidence intervals for mu. Here we are going to indeed start with a situation where mu is going to equal 50 and sigma is going to equal 10. So we know in this case what mu is, but practically 
that doesn't happen. But in the case of a simulation, it can. So our syntax is random 40, put 40 numbers from column 1 to column 100, and those numbers will come from a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. The command we're going to use here to construct confidence intervals for the mu is t for mu is t interval. So the t interval is one of the intervals we can use for mu. 95 is going to correspond to our 95% confidence level. Again, our probability that a given confidence interval will capture the population mean of 50. And then we're going to repeat this 100 times. So we're going to have 100 researchers constructing confidence intervals. Each researcher has the same goal. The goal is to capture the population mean, which is 50. Some of them will be right, and some of them will be wrong. So we're going to ask the question, how many of those 100 intervals will indeed capture the population mean of 50? So here's our syntax. Random 40, C1 through C100, normal 50, 10, T interval 95, C1 through C100. And the first researcher had an N of 40, had a mean of 48.22, so that's his X bar. For his 40 elements, his mean was 48.22. His standard deviation, his S for those 40 elements, was 10.02. So notice his mean X bar of 48.22 is pretty close to 50, and his S of 10.02 is pretty close to 10. Now from those numbers, he's going to construct a confidence interval, and the question is, does that confidence interval capture the population mean of 50? Is 50 between 45.02 and 51.43? And the answer to that is yes. So this is a good confidence interval. Now we can go through and look at each one. The second one, 48.59 to 54.12, that is also a good confidence interval. Now we can continue in that regard, but that's going to be sort of tricky. What, rather than that, I'm going to look for the ones that are bad. So can we find one that doesn't cover 50? So it either starts after 50 or it ends before 50. So we're going to go through our list, and we're going to look to see if we can find any like that. And here's our first example. In C23, it started at 50.32, and it ended at 55.86. This did not capture 50. So this is a bad confidence interval. That's our first one that did not capture the population mean. We will continue looking. Here's another one, 50.97 to 57.53. Second one did not capture the population mean. And you'll notice I've done this ahead of time. And I will look to see if I can find another one. Here we have one that starts at 50.41 and ends at 55.37. Doesn't capture the population mean of 50. One that starts at 50.47 ends at 55.8, does not capture 50. And notice here's the first time that it was a little bit too low. We go from 42.12 to 48.95. That also doesn't capture 50. And 50.83 to 57.11. So we had six bad ones. So we had 94 out of 100 good ones. We expected 95, but if you flip a coin 10 times, you expect to get five heads, but you certainly could get six, or you could get four. So getting 94 good ones out of 100 when you expect 95 certainly seems reasonable to me. So let's ask the question, if 195% confidence intervals for the mean are constructed, what is the probability that exactly 94 intervals capture mu? And you recognize what we have here. We have 100 independent trials. The probability of success on a given trial is 0.95. Probability of failure is 0.05. We want exactly 94 successes. So to do this, we're going to need to use our binomial probability. And the probability that x equals 94 is going to be 100 choose 94, 0.95 to the 94, and 0.05 to the 6th. So let's do this on Excel. 100 choose 94 equals combin, 100 comma 94, 0.95 to the 94 equals 0.95 to the 94, 
and equals 0.05 to the sixth equals 0.05 to the sixth. And to get that probability, we've got to multiply them together. So we're going to say equals product and multiply those three numbers together. And what do we get? We get 0 0.1500. We can also check with the PDF. So we're going to say PDF semicolon binomial 100.95. And if we look to see where, where do we have 94, and you will see that 94 shows up again with 0 0.1500. So my probability of having 94% correct is 0 0.1500, which again is a fairly high so the probability of obtaining exactly 94 correct confidence intervals is indeed about 15%.